Welcome to Session Sunday. Hi guys, it's Jack Edwards and today's session is focusing around recovery runs. But before we get into this week's video, make sure to leave us a like and subscribe and if you missed last week's video, click on the link above. Okay, now moving into the first part of this week's session, we're going to be look at uh, recovering to then force the attacker across goal, which gives us a chance to get back in and then make the recovery tackle. Okay, so it's going to be a 1v1 scenario. But before we get into it, let's have a look at how many players we've got this week and the equipment that we'll be using. So in terms of players, we've got 12 players in this group. Okay, but if you have more or less players, that's fine. So let's say you had 10 players. We just take two players out here. We still got enough players to make the drill work. If you had more players, you might even be able to make it a 2v2 scenario. Okay, so these two players here are going to be the defenders and these are going to be the attackers. So let's say that you have 14 or 16 players, you might throw another defender in here, okay, and it becomes a 2v1 scenario in favour of the defenders. Once the recovering defender's back in, if you have more players, you might have two attackers going in, you might have one um, occupying the defenders and then one player driving with the ball. So there's different ways you can do it for more and less players. In terms of equipment, quite simple, we're just going to be using balls, bibs, cones, flat markers if you have them, which we speak about because if I'm trying to use different areas, it means that the ball when it rolls over doesn't obviously interfere with play. If you have poles as well to use instead of small sided goals, obviously, but if you do have access to small sided goals, that's perfect. So in terms of the setup for this part of the session, okay, in terms of the depth, we're going to have 15 yards from the start here to this line which they've got to cross to score, so kind of like your end zone line, okay, and then we're going to have 25 yards from there. So we're going to have just a few, um, in terms of here, it's just going to be 10 and then 15, okay, so from this point here, this, when you see it on the animation, this line and this line are very close, so there's no real difference. So it's going to be 10 yards into this player, 15 yards into here, and then this player is going to be 5 yards further back than this one, so it's, they've got 10 yards basically on the, recover, on the attacker to try and recover. If that's too much for some of your players, maybe younger players, you can um, increase that, decrease that distance, maybe 5 yards or in between about 7 yards. And then in terms of the width, we're looking around 40 yards, okay, so from the start here, to the middle is going to be 15 each side and then the middle area can be wherever you want it to be so i'd recommend between 10 and 15 yards or older the player okay the, the further it can be also it means that you've got to force them across more as well because this player here is going to be defending against the yellow so they're not going all the way across to recover okay they're going straight back in here so obviously it, the, the width can be a bit better here so how it's going to work what we're looking for the players is to move the ball quickly the quicker they move the ball into their attacker the quicker they can defend okay so what we're going to do, we're going to take a touch across here. So both teams are going to be going at the same time. It's going to get played into the middle player here, who sets it back on the outside for the player who's at the start. This player then moves up to into here, just timing the run. And then the player who started will play to the recovering defender, okay, who opens out. Okay, so these players are just moving up on. Who opens out and plays into their attacker. Okay, so as soon as they played into the blue, okay, they can start to recover to tackle this player. So that then means that both sides are looking to move the ball quickly. Okay, because the quicker that they move it into their attacker, the quicker that they can attack. The quicker that also that they move it into their attacker, that means that the recovering defender can move back into there. So as soon as they've played, they're looking to get into there to defend. So obviously the yellow will be defending here. Okay, forcing them across. So what we're saying is the attackers have got to go to the, the opposite goal. Okay, so that means they've got to move across the pitch as we're looking for this run to be in terms of fullback, midfielder. Okay, to get goal side. Okay, to force them across the pitch where they will get support in a game. Okay, to then win the ball. You might want to change it and tell them the, that they can attack either goal. Okay, so what we're looking for is obviously the yellow will have another ball here. We'll be attacking that goal. Shutting the space down, delaying the attacker, slowing them down and at the right area. Okay, intercepting. The attackers have to cross this line, okay, so they've got around between 15 and 20 yards to get into here, no, around about 15 yards yet to get into here before looking to score in the small side of goals. So obviously for our defenders, it's getting back quickly, covering that ground quickly, okay, once we get in a position to win the ball, can we win it? Ball's dead simple. If you wanted to, you can could create a goal down here for the players to play into when they win it back, it's up to you. 
And also it could be once they win the ball back, could they support their attacker then? So then it can become a 2v2 scenario. So if one ball is still alive once one's finished, this defender, get, this player could come and help in, in, in their defender here. So that's where you can get a 2v2 scenario and this player can help support. So it's then keeping the players switched on to adapt to different scenarios. Then what will happen is the player who was the recovering defender, okay, will go and be the attacker, okay. The player who was at the start moves to the middle point here. The player who was in the middle point moves high. And the player who, the, who was the attacker moves back to the start. So they're just moving up one place at a time. Okay, so what we're trying to focus on with the players is instead of focusing on winning the ball, okay, they've got to put themselves in position to do it first. Okay, so it's covering that ground, getting goal side, because we run inside, okay, so if this player has the ball here, if we're this recovering defender, we run this way, okay, then at the start, we're giving them both goals to aim at because they can come into this side here first, okay? So what we're trying to do by forcing them across the goal is encouraging the player to travel across, okay, instead of travelling straight. Because when they're travelling across, it means it gives us time to come round the goal side. We're shutting off that option and then we can think about defending that goal in there. We will now move into our first animation before moving on to part two of this week's session. Okay, now moving into part two of this week's session, when I'm moving into the first of our two small-sided games, okay, this one is going to be focused on the Blues retaining and switching play, and then reacting to recover as a team to prevent the opposition moving forward, okay? So in terms of the setup for this part of the session, in total, we're going to have 40 yards of width and 40 yards of depth, okay? So we're going to have our middle area here, it's going to be 30 by 30, and then the outsides are going to be five yards either side, okay? So it's just totaling up to our 40, and 40, 40 by 40, so the Blues, they're going to have the two wide areas for their players to take up space. And then the Yellow is going to look to attack either side when they win the ball back. Okay, So the Blues are going to be outnumbered in the middle, Okay, but they're looking to switch the play to the opposite side. What they could maybe do is, once this Blue player is played in, they can support um, the attack this side if you want them to. But the way I, I do it is because we want to be working on our recovery runs is that they've got to stay on the outside here and it encourages movements in here and then we get our recovery runs from these wide areas when we lose possession so the coach will play into the blues one of the wide players to start or even into the middle players they're looking to maneuver that ball okay so they can use this player at all times maneuver this ball into the wide the opposite wide player retain possession okay for as long as they can in terms of the yellows when they win the ball back they're looking then to secure the ball and then attack either side they have to dribble the ball into that end zone, okay? So then that gives us a chance to get back into possession. You might want to then progress it further on into the session where you have, they can receive the ball into the end zones, okay? If you have goalkeepers, you could be that they, receive, they can dribble or receive into here and then they can try and score. If you have more players, you can even obviously make the area bigger. You could even have it where you have two teams doing the same thing. So if you had more yellows and more blues, you can have yellows either side, blues either side, and then when they lose the ball, to come in to try and win it, however you want to do it. So when the yellows win the ball, it's how do we react? How can we as a team stop them progressing forward, okay? So if they look to attack this side, we've got two players here, okay? Can they delay this player on the ball, okay, whilst we get bodies back behind it? So we get these wide players coming in, which gives us a solid base and foundation for our four, and then we get two recovering players. So they're gonna be thinking of them runs from deep, cutting passing lanes, okay, cutting runs out for players. So when this player starts to travel towards um, the goal, the end zone, these players can see what's, be what's behind them as well. So we can force them into areas where it's going to be congested and we can win the ball. So if there's a player behind here and this player is moving up either side, can we think of keep them travelling to one side where they're going to run out of space and then can we look to pinch the ball? When we win the ball for the Blues, then we're looking to obviously get some players out wide again, secure the ball, or if it goes out of play, let's say we were in a tackle or an interception and the ball goes out, then the ball can start from there. So in terms of the Blues focusing on obviously keeping possession when we lose the ball, okay, it's a positive reaction, okay, so getting ourselves in, okay. It might even be that instead of getting our shape, we go and counter count press quickly to win the ball, so our recovery runs to get round the player on the ball, okay, suffocate them in possession, win the ball back, 
and then secure it again. So we're looking to get that ball wide. Once we get it into the wide areas, this player can hold onto it for a couple of seconds whilst we can try and regain some shape and then we can look to play forward and place it to the other side. So obviously with our recovery run, it's about that agency, that willingness to get back and then showing that tenacity to win the ball um, to stop the opposition progressing forward. We will now move into our next animation before moving on to the final part of this week's session. Okay, now moving into the final part of this week's session, we're now moving into our second small-sided game-based scenario. Okay, so this time we're going, we're going to be looking at the Blues trying to play forward via wide areas, okay, and then reacting, okay, to get more bodies in central areas once they lose the ball to prevent the opposition moving forward. Okay, so in terms of the setup for this part of the session, we're going to go with 50 yards of total depth. So the end zone here for the yellows for scoring is going to be 10 yards and we're going to have 40 yards of total depth in here, okay, for, you know, the playing area. And then our width is going to be 40 yards, but you can increase the area, the size of the, uh, the middle area if you want to, if it's a bit too tight in there. So it's going to be 20 yards centrally and 10 yards either side, but you might want to increase that to 20 yard, 25 yards to give the Blues a bit more room to manoeuvre um, once they're in possession of the ball. So the Blues have to have one player in each wide zone when in possession of the ball on transition. It's a little bit different, okay, so in, if they do win the ball back to then score, it's a bit different there. We just want to obviously try and get the ball into these wide areas, but if there's only one in there, in one in one wide area, that's okay. But obviously when we're in possession, we're trying to keep him, uh, two, one player in each, in each zone. So the ball starts with the coach, okay, he's going to play into the Blues, okay, they're looking to keep the ball and get it into these wide areas. When they get into wide areas, they're looking to play forward to score. Quite simple, okay, if they score, they retain possession. Okay, so we're looking at our recovery runs, but what we're looking to do is obviously encourage our players to carry on doing the, same, the right methods with the ball. And then if we do lose it, that's when we've got to improve on the other side of the game and on, on transition. Okay, so when the Blues have got the ball, we can move the ball. So the Yellows can move into these areas as well. So they might occupy the Wingers, but then they, that then gives us the 4v4 in the middle area. Okay, which means we can obviously get forward a bit easier and find some space. And it's down to the players in wide areas to win their battles. If the Blues have it though, and the yellows win the ball, the intercept the pass, okay, what we're looking for, regain some shape, okay, get across the pitch, so if the ball's in this wide area here, we want the players coming across, okay, making it difficult for the yellows to travel forward, they can either receive the ball in this end zone or dribble in, okay, so what we're looking for is nearest man puts pressure, nearest player puts pressure on the ball, okay, so if it's the fullback here, fullback puts pressure on, we have players regaining shape in here, okay, so you might have Two centre-backs, left-back, holding midfield and the player, preventing balls going backwards as well. So then look, we're trying to suffocate them. If they manage to get the ball to the side, we do the same. We all shuffle across, we get bodies around the ball, prevent that forward progress, okay? When they do go forward, okay, that's it. That's when it's time for us to be tenacious, okay? To show that willingness to win the ball, to be aggressive to win the ball back. Force the players into areas where, again, con uh, where it's going to be congested, suffocating space, okay, delaying and deflecting them away from the area where, where we want them to go, so stopping them going forward. Okay, so what it takes is hard work, basically. Okay, so the player's got to work hard to get across. It might be a time when we set into a, a formation, a four and two, a three and a three, whatever it may be, and we can obviously try and be compact and stop the opposition playing through and then try and win the ball and write it in the right area. Or it might be that when we transition, okay, we get after the ball, okay, players have got in quickly, we've got bodies around the ball, we can stop the passing lanes, put, show players into a certain area and be aggressive to win the ball back, back quickly and then play. So there's different times, so different times in the game as well, we might lose the ball in the 80th minute and we're winning 2-0, so we're just looking to obviously restrict the space in behind, okay, be compact. Frustrate the opposition, okay, and when we win it back, we can then try and keep possession. We might be early in the game, pressing after the ball, looking for that counter press. Obviously, the players aren't as tied in them areas then, so it's a bit easier for them to get after the ball. And then, obviously, we can look for players to be a bit more aggressive to win it back and then get forward and then try and score quickly. So trying to teach the players that they don't always have to do it one way, okay, but the main thing is, is when we lose the ball, how do we react? Can we get into, back into position? Can we deny the opposition moving forward quickly, okay, and then look to win the ball? We will now move into our final animation before concluding this week's session.
Thanks for watching this week's video. Don't forget to head over to our website where you can sign up to view all of our exclusive content. And we'll see you next week for another Session Sunday.